All right, all right. Welcome back to another episode of the Founders Table that was created for you, the founder of your entrepreneurial-led organization. This is a podcast by founders for founders. So pull up a seat to the Founders Table. Let's have a real conversation about the real things that you're going through. I'm back with my main man, yeah. Anthony Bashilia. We had a little bit of a hiatus there. I know, I know. Last week I wasn't here. Obviously, it wasn't as good. But you guys did a decent job. What do you mean a decent job? <laughs> we, dude, we did a fucking amazing job. No, I, it think, was. I think it was actually our highest rated podcast. And that would was mean it? that. Yeah, it would mean That's that. That's bullshit. Uh, executive producer. Did that get more views than that, the other ones? That would mean that you were the, you were the, you know. You're, I'm the anchor. You're, you're the anchor. I'm the weak link. You're the weak link. Fucking bullshit. Oh, well, we'll see. We're, <laughs> we're rolling live right now. So right. we'll see what, uh, what people think. Okay, cool. All well, right. today. Yes. What? Okay. So little yeah, war stories. Yeah. So we were I talking about this. We were working out at the gym this morning. He said, "What should we talk about?" I said, "I don't know. We, we talk about a lot of different topics. We got a whiteboard behind us or behind you." Um, and so he goes, "Let's talk about war stories. We got some freaking war stories being founders, don't we?" Dude, I got so many war stories, and people love to hear them because everybody always thinks like things are easy and good, and they're fucking not. No. No, so I, I thought about which one I should tell today out of the dozens of the times that I was up and down, up and down, but uh, I, I got a pretty good one. Okay. You were actually, you probably remember some of this. This is when we when we first met. Okay, let's go. Then I'll, then I'll, I'll, I'll jump in too. All right, so, so, I, so after I was fucking lost everything in 2008 and trying to rebound and figure shit out, and then I kind of met Nick during that time, post-mortgage business, era of recession, lost everything, and uh, was dead broke in my fucking house, foreclosure. Uh, houses in foreclosure. All my fucking houses were in foreclosure. I had no money. Trying to figure shit out, and I had a had a huge house I wasn't paying for, and I had a basement, and and I had I brought all my desks from my mortgage company over to the basement. I won't make this too long, but and uh, so I was just trying to figure shit out. I had people coming to my house and trying to figure out what to do next. I refused to get a fucking job, so. Um, so that's when I kind of met Nick, and we were talking. He was on the West Coast. He had, had a mutual friend, the business killer. <laughs> <laughs> we, talk, we talked about him already. Yeah, you put him in any business, and he'll, he'll make sure it's run down to the ground within three months. <laughs> so so, uh, so we met. So I, I met Nick through the business killer, <laughs> and, uh, and we kind of figured out this new kind of thing, that this new sale. And we, me and my partner, Kevin, who's my partner now at the time, we were testing this thing out in my basement, cold calling this B2B sale, and we kind of figured something out, like, wow, this thing's got legs. And you were like, dude, this this thing is, we can maybe fucking build something around this, but I was fucking dead broke at the yeah, time. Yeah, so you went from, so you went from like crushing it in the mortgage industry. <laughs> Murdering by it. By being smashed by it. So you had, you had how many houses? Three. Three houses, and you had a big ass house in Jersey. Yeah, all in foreclosure. Uh, for some reason, I picture your house. In Jersey, I don't know if it looks like this, but just knowing you, I picture it look like you know, like Scarface and shit, like big fucking pillars and like <laughs> no. like marble everywhere, you know. Well, 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 like, there was a lot of like, tile, like burgundy painted walls. No, you know, my dad like built the house, big heavy drapes. My dad built the house, yeah, right. So it, it it had some tile in it, but it had a lot of wood. It was nice, but we had a fucking huge. Like how Tuscan was it? Like it was like. It was like a 6,000 square foot house. Okay. Beautiful. The basement was fucking huge. I had a bar. Yeah. Back then, I was a big drinker. I had a pool table. I had a movie theater. I could just see this, dude. I could just see you. And there was a whole other room. So I took all my mortgage company desks, like 12 of them. I put them all, all in this back. one big room. And then I had like people coming in and out of my house in yeah. the basement trying to figure shit out. Yeah. Whatever. So we figure out. Well, that, so, the, so the product that he's talking about, we, we called it Grow Your Business, G-Y-B, which was Google, Yahoo. Yeah, Yahoo. this is back, back when Google just just released. Google business, listings. Business listings, yeah, yeah when, when Google just came out, Google business listings, and no one knew they existed, and we were helping business owners claim them, verify them, and, and we're like, dude, there's like fucking 10 million of these things, man. Right. We can make a whole business out yeah. of this, you know? So, so we had something going, but I was fucking dead broke. I didn't know what to do. I wanted to open an office. My whole family fucking hated me. <laughs> Ever, nobody believed in me at that time. <laughs> you know, so I'm like, fuck. So I had this one guy. I had this one guy who was just, I met at some mastermind a couple years earlier by chance, and he always would come and check up on us. You know, I'm like, hey, his name was Brian, real nice guy, real successful guy. He just really liked me, you know, just for knowing. He'd come in, he'd come to my office, be like, oh, what are you guys up to in my, my basement? I'm like, oh, dude, we figured this thing out, this Google thing, and he's asking me questions, like, there's 10 million of them? I said, yeah, this is a real thing, you know? So then he comes in one day, and I'm like, dude, we got something here. He's like, dude, I want you to meet somebody. He's like, all right. He's like, can you meet me at the Empire State Building 
in the restaurant called the Hearth on the bottom floor. I want you to meet the, my, my friend Mike. I think he could. I think he could help you out. I have no idea. Right? We go there next week. We meet in the Empire State Building. Like the actual Empire State Building. The, the actual Empire State Building, New York City, in the restaurant on the bottom floor. Like the one God uh, King Kong climbed up. Yeah, like fucking that one. Okay. So Just we go sure. there. So we, we, this guy comes in, bald guy. His name's Mike. Best name ever, Michael Savage. <laughs> real name, real name. Wow. How, how amazing is that name? I wish my last name was Savage. So we meet with this guy, and uh, he, we're talking. We're talking. He's like, "So you got this thing, this Google thing? It's all business owners. Yeah, yeah." He's like, and, "And there's a lot of them. Yeah, that's cool." He goes, "All right." He's like, "Look." He goes, uh, "He's like, I have a business where I sell tax and accounting services." Oh, I remember this guy to business owners yeah. all all over uh, the country. This. He goes, "The 64th floor of the Empire Staple up there." That whole floor is my office. Wow. The entire floor. Wow. He goes, do you think that if your business owners bought the Google thing, that maybe then if you pass that customer to me, that maybe we could sell your them. Your answer was hell yes. They could sell them you know, tax accounting services. I go, yeah, definitely. He goes, all right, look. He goes, I know you need some help. I have a small little space inside the office, fit about 10 people. He goes, I'll let you go in there for free. I don't want any rent. You could use my yeah. phones. You could use my computers. He's like, all I want you to do is just after you sell the customer, pass me the customer to sell them my shit. I'm like, done. Where can I start? He's like, next week. Dude, I'm, I'm having like... like you remember the flashback? Oh, yeah, dude. I'm having like memory recall PTSD. Because right. I remember we used to teach our reps, like say, we have an office on the Empire, on the 64th floor of the Empire of State, State, State building. building. Right. Like, are you guys legit? Well, well, we're in the Empire State Building. What the State fuck you we think have, we're legit? We have a whole floor. They don't just let anybody in there. But you know, you, you know, you know how asinine that sounds. Like that made us sound like we were fugazi. <laughs> yeah, like, it made it worse. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh yeah, you got it in the Empire State Building, dude. So, so, so I catch this fucking lucky break. I catch this lucky break, and we immediately go into the Empire State Building, and we start setting up shop. Right, and there was like. Eight or nine desks, right? And this thing's got like, it's working. <laughs> we're hiring people off of Craigslist, ex stockbrokers that know how to sell in New York. And we're in this like thing. But the, the best thing about the whole thing was that not only did I have this little, this little, and, and, and the, another bad part comes soon. That's why I'm telling you the story. So um, not only, but I get to, the biggest thing was that th they were doing $80 million a year out of this floor. Wow. And it was all, I remember, dude, I fucking, dude, it was all fucking I'm gonna need to go to therapy after this. Dude, it was savage sales guys. I mean, well, Mike, monsters. Michael Savage, of course. Right. So it was like, they had one room of sales guys with like 30 or 40 guys who sold one thing. Then they would, then it would sell them something. Then it would go to the other side of the room and there was like 20 guys selling something else. Then it would go, there was like a hundred sales guys all fucking selling all day. So, so you're so, kind of like talking about describing what you got going on out here. Yeah, kind of what I'm going to, <laughs> which I learned a lot from so, this. Yeah, yeah. So not only would did I start my, my company in this little space, but what I got to do is witness the how an $80 belt. million dollar operation mm. works and how they were setting appointments and how we're doing upsells. It was the best education out of any edu not that I learned anything in fucking college, but it was the best education I ever had was that three months. So we're in there, right? And it's starting to work. And now we're like maxed out on the desk, right? Because there's only eight. I'm like, fuck it. Put some guys on the floor. I got fucking guys sitting on the floor with fucking dialing from their cell phones, you know? <laughs> I think you watched, you watched Boiler Room like one too many times. I love that movie. I, I knew it. I knew it. Wait, so so now it's like three months in. I'm not fucking going. <laughs> I'm not fucking leaving. I'm not leaving. So 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 now listen, we're passing this guy all the leads, all the customers. They ain't selling a fucking thing to these guys. Come on. No, nobody's buying their tax packages. Wait, are they are they not buying? This is what he's telling. No, no, no. They're not buying because we had a whole commission thing. They're not buying because they were selling tax packages to biz out people. Oh, so like you're 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 a guy who never had a business before, and then you want to make money from home, mm. and then someone calls you, hey, listen, you need to get an LLC, right. you need a business plan. They don't know any fucking better. Right. So those were that was the prey. The contractors, the plumbers, HVAC. I'm like, fuck you. I don't need your accounting services. Like they weren't buying shit. So we're like three months there, and he walks in. He's like, hey, bro, listen, I gotta talk to you. He goes, yeah, you, 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 we ain't selling shit yet with your leads. He goes, you, you're just incubating your whole company right here in my office. Yeah, like, dude, this is your idea. I'm, yeah, and he goes, and it's fine, but you got you to get the fuck out. I go, all right, how long do you need? He's like, you got to be out by next week. What? I'm like, what? I'm by next week. He's like, you got to be out by the end of next week. Dude. I'm sorry. He's a, sa he's a savage, he, Michael Savage. He walks in his door, closes his door. 
I'm like, fuck, dude, what do we do? You know, I got like 10 guys I do, now. I remember it's got so, legs. So How do you go find an office in fucking a week, you know? So at this time, I never knew what executive office space was. Yeah, yeah like we work and... And you know, Regis. So you can... We work did not exist back right. then, but they had these things called Regis and other ones where you could walk in and you have desks already set up, phone set up, Wi-Fi, but you're paying a fucking premium for it. But we had no choice. So we found right it was it, it figured it was right over Jay Z's forty forty club oh, yeah, on twenty yeah, seventh yeah. and Broadway. So Jay Z's forty forty club was there. And then we get into the space and within a week we're back up and running. We're paying rent through the fucking roof though. But, but at least we didn't lose steam, right? And it was small. Like a room that we're in this big was like 5000 a month, a room wow. like this. So we got like two rooms like this big, right? And squeeze guys next like, to each other. And back then, the, the, there was it was hand phones. It right, wasn't right. like the headset shit. No, but this is right before the automated dialing. Before so. automated yeah, dialer. Yeah. And, and, you know, and it's, it's loud, but we got it working again. We're like, hey, dude, we got... So now we're grown. Now we get another one of these fucking 5,000 square foot offices. And now, and now we have like 40 people squeezed into these offices. <laughs> but we got legs, right? It's working. So, all of a sudden, dude, fucking Hurricane Sandy comes. Okay? So, Hurricane, if you guys don't know Hurricane Sandy, it wiped out the East Coast for like two weeks. Buildings torn down. Power was out, right? And, you know, I'm still learning this whole business, right? Hurricane Sandy comes in, wipes out all of New York City, shuts down all the power, everything for a week, right? Not only, so... We had all these customers we were sending. Now, now, it was like phone sales and customers were already sketchy as it is. We were still new with this. Right. So what happened was customers were calling in. And back then when they called in, they got that eh, 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 eh. Remember the old Dude, So they're canceling left and right. So, so they're calling in thinking they got scammed. Right. Hundreds of customers are calling in. Power's down for a week. So chargebacks through the fuck. We got like 200 chargebacks in a week. Merchant company calls up. Well, and then and back then we were like we were like day to day. Remember? Yeah, we, like, we were barely surviving. Like with we, cash we, flow. we we needed that. We needed the merchant like account to settle daily just to like make it to the next day. Yeah, yeah, just to we, pay for the data. Just to pay for we you know needed everything. Every dot. And back then I didn't even know. I remember my partner was like, "Dude, we got 200 chargebacks." I'm like, what "The fuck is a chargeback?" <laughs> I, did, I didn't even know what a chargeback was. Right. Right. Shut down, merchant service, merchant company shuts us down. We have an Amex bill due of 150 grand. We're calling Amex, worked out an 18 month payment plan to try to pay them out. All the, none of the employees wanted to cut down. Like, what do we do? Called my dad. He's like, hey, I got this building, this mixed use. This, the, the guy just left. I could put something together for you so you can move back to Jersey. Moved back to Jersey, lost like 36 of the 40 employees. Four employees from New York were willing to travel back to Jersey to come work for us. And we had to start all over again, bro. Oh! Oh! Nazi. So just so you know, this is actually live. You can't plan this shit. Yeah. But that's what it feels like. That's what it feels like when, when things are, are coming down and you feel like everything's just toppling <laughs> over. Yeah. But here's the thing. I want to point something out. Uh, that you weren't starting over. No, because I got the model figured out. Exactly. I went through all the hard part. Exactly. I knew the script was working. The sales were working. Right. Yeah, we didn't have... See, the... the the problem was is that in New York, you had access to the talent, bro. Yes. Guys who could sell, the Wall Street guys. There, there's nobody talented in New Jersey. <laughs> Zero. No, no, no. We, we found a lot of talent. We got a great bunch of guys in Jersey now, but it took a while. So we came back to Jersey, started all over again. We had to go borrow like 10 grand from a friend of mine. Like, look, bro. I'm like, and and meanwhile, I just came off of being broke. Like, right. Look, dude, I'm not like, like I got this thing fucking figured out. Like, yeah, yeah, like you did last time, huh? Like you got that real <laughs> yeah. estate game on lockdown. I'm like, but I explained what happened with Hurricane Sandy and everything else. And, you know, so so I got the 10 grand I needed just to float what we need to do. Got another merchant account under like, I got three merchant accounts under like three friends' names because mine was fucking like blackballed because of what happened. Like the whole thing right. pieced it together. And it took about six to 12 months to get it moving again 
And then it finally turned, and then we went on a fucking run for like five, six years. Yeah, yeah, that was that was great. I mean, we would have went yeah. on it. We would have went on a run, but uh, yeah. So Nick was my partner on the West Coast, but he had the business killer on his team, and within six months, <laughs> boom, <laughs> done, <laughs> done. And see, that's what people don't understand is that like sometimes these things are happening for you. Actually, most of the times they're happening for you. They're not happening to you, and it's just teaching you how to have that grit and that resolve. Yeah. And most entrepreneurs, most entrepreneurs give up. Up. They give up right before right they're before. about to get what they really wanted. You know, I mean, you had every reason to quit. You had every reason to I stop. I wanted to blow my fucking brain. I know. And that. most people do. I do too, even yeah. to this day. And each level brings like a new level of complexity and it requires like, like grit and tenacity. <laughs> because here's the thing is you say you want something. The world, the universe, God is going to test you and say, how bad do you want it? How much resolve do you have? Because that's what separates the 1% from the 99 is the 1% will do what the 99% won't do 100% of the time. Yeah. And that's why you got this. I, out of everything. And Every, I, everything that's out here. Yeah. And, we, and it, we went through so much shit with this too. I know. But after that one. It's like, who cares? After I, that one, when something happens, I'm like, all right. Yeah. What are we doing? Let's, 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 let's roll up. Let's, let's yeah. roll the sleeves. Let's, let's fucking bite down in the mouthpiece. How are we going to figure this problem out now? Exactly. It's almost like this is how it goes. Like, let's go. You know what exactly. I mean? I'm ready to go fight again. Exactly. So after that one, that was probably like the toughest one. Right. And I went to, and there's more that we could talk about next podcast. Yeah, later, well, we'll, we'll, that was a fucking tough one. You know? So we'll, we'll talk about it. We're coming up short on time, but because I, I got to uh, got to keep this party train rolling. We got so much. Like you guys got to come check this out. If you haven't seen APN Tech, you got to go over to the website. It's APN Tech dot IO. Yeah. Head over to APN Tech dot IO. If you're if you actually are a small business owner, I, this wasn't planned. Go get on their services. They have figured out how to make your company visible online. This place is busting at the seams. Just give and us what, all your fucking what, money. Yeah. And what we're doing <laughs> and what we're doing at the next ninety is we're taking businesses like this to the next level so that they can build a predictable, profitable, transferable, and sellable business. But it doesn't come. Without a lot of war stories, doesn't right. come without a lot of scars. Well, let's do a part two because oh, well, I, 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 just as Nick's got some crazy. Well, I, 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 I want to tell you. So we're going to set it up for for next week. But my my war story is where when I literally threw my shoes at my CFO. It was I, this media mix. Yeah, I, yeah. Th I threw my shoes at him, <laughs> and I'll, and I'll tell you why. Not now, but on the next episode. So like, you're going to have to go to war. Like, and here's the thing. Fucking that, war, dude. And here's here's the thing. Where does the real war exist? It exists right here. Yeah. Like we don't live in a worn torn world. We live in a worn torn mind. I mean, we do live in a worn torn world, but not here in the United States. We live in a worn torn mind. Entrepreneurs have to go to fucking war every single day with those thoughts. Like, cause how many times did you want to quit? I, so many fucking times. How many did, times did you quit? None. Exactly. And that's why we're here today having these real conversations about real issues that founders face. So you know what? It's time to go to fucking war. Put well, your what, fucking helmet on. That's right. Like, roll up the sleeves. <laughs> like, I love that. Bite down on the mouth. Bite down on the mouth. And piece. let's go. And let's go. So we thank you for being on this episode of The Founder's Table. I know it was short. I know it was quick. But like I said with my wife, 90 seconds with Nick is all you need. And, uh, <laughs> and, and for the most part, Anthony's not there when it happens. But anyway, this has been another episode of The Founder's Table where we have real conversation from real founders four founders so pull up a seat and let's have some real talk and we'll see you on the next episode <gasps> of the founders table we're out <laughs> 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 <laughs>